Hello! It's the Dirty J here with a video on how to level up this Mystic from levels 1 to 20. While a lot of classes will have similar strategies to leveling up, I plan on doing a video for each section of the game up to level 50 for every class to detail some of the intricacies that you will find when leveling. In this one, we will be looking at how to obtain your starting gear sets, quests and how they guide you to training areas, as well as some beginning strategy tips for low-leveled Mystics. All classes when exiting Tutorial Island will be placed in Watts Tavern, also known as the Patreon Inn. This is also where we can start our first quest to help us familiarize ourselves with the Hoppinous Town and Game, Patreon. When opening Hogwarts Dialogue, we can see an option highlighted with a red exclamation mark with an MQ that stands for Main Quest. For beginning players, the quest will mostly run through Hoggle as you help people around town with various tasks, so if you're looking for your next quest to do, try coming back here. Every class starts with a quest here to go find their class trainer, so let's start with that. After starting the quest, we need to leave the inn and move down to speak to the guide NPC located in the town center. While here, you should buy a guide to Patreon to get X and Y coordinates for different important places in the city. Your position on the map is located in the upper left corner of your screen, next to where your HP and MP bar are currently located. After starting Yonder's quest, use the guide to Patreon you just purchased to find your class trainer shown here. Using this item, we can see that the Mystic Trainer is at X75 and Y175, which is going to be directly to the right of the Patreon Town Center in the first building you come to. Starting and completing the quest, The Journey Ahead, is going to give you your first class-specific gear, although you won't be able to use it all quite yet. This is going to help you get the ball rolling when we go back to the end to start completing more quests. Your class trainer is going to be where you can buy spells up to level 50. So make sure to come back every few levels to check and see if you have something new. You can also buy some gear for certain levels from your class tailor that is located in the same room. Getting from level 5 to 15 can be achieved very quickly and should be done while following Hogwarts questline around town to kill various monsters. The quests will line up well with how strong you are as you are completing them, so you won't accidentally go somewhere with monsters that are a lot stronger than you. If you ever want to see what quest you are on, or how much of it you have completed, you can always check by opening up your quest log by either pressing the L key or clicking on the exclamation mark in the menu on the top right portion of your screen. Quests of different types will be noted by different exclamations to help you easier find which type of quest you are wanting to complete. I recommend that you be careful when going through your first playthrough and read carefully what each quest says as it can have helpful dialogue to guide you to your next training spot and currently will no longer show in the quest log when you finally complete it. Whenever you are done with old gear or find useless items on the ground, you can always bring them to the town center and sell them to Grindle McGuire for half the value shown on the item description screen. This will be the main way for you to acquire gold to help purchase gear, spells, and teleports. The strongest thing the Mystic has access to is its ability to cast spells over a long distance and over terrain to deal damage to monsters while not allowing the monster to hit you. For low levels though, it can be faster to use your spells while kiting the enemy and hitting it with your weapon. This can be done by hitting the monster and taking a quick step back to stay out of range of retaliation. A little bonus tip is that monsters will take an extra 25% damage if you hit them in the side, and a 50% bonus will be applied to any monster that you can hit in the back. I also recommend doing the main quests for Jack after you complete Estevez's second quest, as this will teach you how to use the trade skills blacksmithing and crafting, as well as supply you with a couple pieces of low leveled gear. You can get items of different rarities and titles that can affect the stats of the gear you make or drop, so always make sure to look out for gear that is of higher rarity or has a title that gives stats that you would want for your class. When going through the Mushroom Cave, I highly suggest you stop by the top right of it before you get to the other side to talk to an NPC named Jiggles that has a side quest for you to kill your first boss, the Crusher. This boss is not too difficult, and as a mystic you should have no problems if you just stay away from him. The Crusher drops a quest item called Old Man's Cave Map that can be turned in through the Mushroom Maze near the bottom of the cave. Bosses also drop coin purses which can be used to gain gold based on the level of the boss that dropped it, and if you are lucky enough you can even get experience scrolls that will give you double experience for 15 minutes when used. 
Note that experience scrolls have a level maximum to use them, so if you have a level 10 experience blessing, it can only be used at a character level of 20 or lower. There are two more bosses deeper in the cave I recommend you kill as well for a chance at gear and gold. The name of a monster will be a different color based on its power level in relation to you. White named enemies are your level, yellow or slightly higher, and red named enemies might give you quite the struggle if you attempt to kill them. This shows the name of a rabble slime when going from level 9 to 10. At level 10 you can buy your first piece of gear from your class tailor, so make sure to go back and get that and purchase any spells you can afford that you haven't learned yet for level 5, as the quests and bosses you've done so far should give you enough gold if you've been selling your items. Thunderstorm and Firestorm are your first two AoE spells and can deal lots of damage when hitting herds of enemies. Note that it will be difficult to cast all of your spells at level 10 as your wisdom stat is still relatively low and you will likely run out of MP when trying to unleash your full power. However, your stats increase with each level up naturally and after a few levels you will be able to cast them more effectively. I also suggest that you look out for gear with high wisdom as this will help you deal more damage by allowing you to cast your spells more often. The quest Brotherly Love introduces you to the Adventurer's Guild, which similarly to the main quest line should guide you through the areas of the game in a way that leaves you fighting enemies around your level while giving you extra experience and gold. The Adventurer's Guild can be found at X78 and Y191 in Patreon. Marco Watts will give you the quest that will be marked with an AG exclamation mark in your quest log. I recommend you to do these quests as soon as possible as oftentimes they will give you access to repeatable quests in the area that you're training in that will also reward you with experience and gold making your leveling process that much smoother. It also has the weekly quest board which when completed once per week per account will grant you with heroes parks to be traded for upgrade scrolls to upgrade your gear. Although I recommend you to save these marks until later as your gear progression will be very quick on your way to level 50 and can be more effective later. Members of the Adventurer's Guild will be found in the maps near the monsters that they will want you to be killing. Generally, you will get a task from them to kill a certain number of monsters or bosses and once completed you can return back to the Adventurer's Guild to find your next contact. These are level restricted, so if you don't see any quests from Marco, then try it back again after leveling up. If you haven't already, use some of the extra gold you've acquired to this point to buy both the Hearth spell and some Patreon or Patreon Adventurer Guild teleports from Hogwarts to speed up your travel times between your training area and town for turning in quests. On your way to level 15, I suggest you kill three bosses, Billy Bob, Great Mr. Sally, and Venom for a chance at getting gear and experience scrolls. Just beware that the Great Mr. Sally will introduce you to a boss mechanic that allows him to reflect damage and heal himself when you damage him. Red flames will appear when bosses use this ability, and blue flames will appear when they are safe to attack again. Make sure to stop by the blacksmith in Patreon at level 14 to buy a new weapon. You can also start buying body armor from your tailor at level 15, however the monsters and bosses in the haunted cafeteria which can now be accessed through the top part of Scanty Plain also drop these items, so if you're either low on gold or want to wait to spend it until you kill the bosses one time, you can do that first and see if you get lucky. Killing the three bosses located here is the next Adventurer's Guild quest anyway, so complete the quest and train here until you reach level 19 making sure to kill the bosses whenever they spawn for a chance at titled gear and experience scrolls. At level 19 we can do the next Adventurer's Guild quest on Aloha Island, which can be accessed by talking to the NPC at the bottom part of Shores of Renewal that you met earlier when doing the main quest line. This NPC will also allow you to travel to Askar Forest and Maloha Zoo at levels 23 and 27 respectively. Our contact for the guild will be located on the southern portion of the island and can be found easily by tracing the coastline to the right of the dock you are brought in on. She will ask you to kill Mr. Sally's ghost, which like the great Mr. Sally, has the ability to reflect damage back at you when he uses his ability, so be very careful when attacking him to make sure you don't accidentally kill yourself. Remember, red flames means the ability is activated, and blue flames means that he's safe to attack again. Sally's ghost can drop weapons for all classes, so make sure to try to kill him as often as possible when training on Maloha Island. 
After a short training session on Maloha, you should be level 20, which is where I'm going to end this video for now. I will make a new guide for higher levels in this, but as long as you continue to follow the Adventurer Guild's questline, you should have a good idea on how to continue training. As an added bonus for sticking around to the end of the video, I'll show you what color the hair dye looks like that dropped from Sally's ghost that I just killed. Nice. I hope this guide has helped you, and if you have any ideas for guides you'd like to see in the future that isn't class or leveling related, please let me know in the description below. As always, thank you.